Hi, I'm Teddy Alexandro Evans, and you're watching Out at the Center. <laughs> Author, teacher, and spiritual coach Christian De La Huerta says the goddess is back. He spoke to Outside the Center's Rick Baruta about how the empowerment of women and the balancing of feminine and masculine in all of us may be the key to spiritual renewal for the LGBT community. Christian, in your book, uh, Coming Out Spiritually, you wrote a little bit about gay archetypes. How can archetypes be useful to LGBTs today? What's interesting about archetypes is that there are universal energies that we can tap into. That's a real simple or maybe simplistic way to look at them. Um, the reason that these particular archetypes, which are all spiritual roles that we have played throughout history, people that we today call gay or queer or LGBT, um, is that it's really ironic that so many of us struggle with the issue of spirituality. No, no wonder, you know, given the, the fact that we confuse it with religion, and given the treatment that we have received and continue to receive at the hands of most religions. But what is ironic and sad and tragic about that is that before the patriarchal times, um, back when the divine feminine where women uh, were honored, um, people that we today call gay or whatever, were not only spiritually inclined, but were actually honored for the roles of spiritual service and leadership that we provided in many, many different contexts all over the world. Part of the reason that we need to reclaim these roles um, is that as we reclaim them, and of course we've always played them, but too often from a place of fear and a place of hiding and a place of repression. And what I feel the times are calling out for us to do is for us to step into them in full pride, and I don't mean that pride that we talk about in, in June every year, I'm talking about a capital P pride that is so humble, that is so profoundly humble, that has such a sense of gratitude and responsibility about these gifts and these jobs that we have been called to. In many cultures, we were thought to contain the essence of both male and, f and female, masculine and feminine, and, and because of that, we were considered to be great mediators between the genders. So in Native American tribes, for example, and many of them, um, we were referred to as Burdash or um, two-spirited folk is a more recent uh, term, uh, people who cross gender boundaries, who in terms of functions within the tribe, sometimes the dress uh, was also gender bending or, or crossing traditional boundaries. Um, and we, when there was strife between a couple, when there was strife between the men and the women in, a, in, a, in the village or in the tribe, we were the ones that they went to for resolution. It was also important that if a couple was going to get married, you know, quote unquote, in, in a Native American context, that they got the blessing of this individual. So in many traditions, uh, the belief system is that as we become more spiritually evolved, uh, that we begin to exhibit both the masculine and feminine uh, qualities of, of the divine. So, um, so, so along those lines, you know, it's, it's in, in, in Taoism, for example, the, the, the whole, uh, the, the, it's very important to balance the masculine and the feminine. The yin and the yang. The yin and, and the yang, right. ex exactly. And, and even in mystical um, Christianity, in the, in the Gnostic Gospels, the, the Nag Hammadi ones that were found in, in the 40s, um, in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus is said to have said that not until you marry within yourself the masculine and the feminine, uh, will you find the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, of course, not being some mythical place that we go to after we die, but a state of mind, a state of being, a state of consciousness, to which he never claimed exclusivity, by the way. Yeah. So moving from there to, to a culture today where masculinity is so dominant and suppresses the feminine and the sacred feminine, how can we embrace that sacred feminine? Yeah, I'm writing a book called uh, The Soul of Power, uh, which is really for everybody, but I want to target it particularly for women um, because I believe that the single most important thing that needs to happen in our world is the empowerment of women. And that to that, we can connect all these other issues that we're facing. Um, and, so, and it is about balancing 
the, the masculine and the feminine within, within each one of us, regardless of you know, external physical characteristics. Um, so it's about, how, it's about stepping into power in a way that's not about hierarchy, you know, that doesn't need me to put anybody down in order to prop myself up. Uh, that it's power that is not about manipulation or control or abuse of, or abuse of force, uh, power that is not dependent on externals, you know, such as fame or money or political status or religious role. And that's all for this excerpt from Outside the Center. If you want to see the full show, check it out on our website at gaycenter.org slash out. Until next time, I'm Teddy Alexandro Evans. Goodbye. <laughs>